Welcome once again to Breakfast Central. This Tuesday morning, South Africa has once again been rocked by tavern tragedies as 19 people were killed over the weekend in two separate shooting incidents, one in Soweto and the other in Peter Maritzburg. In the Soweto incident, uh, police say five men used AK-47 rifles to fire on patrons at the Malalose's Tavern. The police minister and commissioner visited the area on Monday and were met by an angry community complaining about high levels of crime. New Central's Ni Omoni has more in this report. At a time when the nation is just recovering from the loss of 21 people, mostly teens and a turban, in what many have described as a disturbing occurrence, 19 people have been killed after armed assailants randomly shot at patrons in two bars in South Africa in separate incidents. It's not safe at all here. It's not safe at all because even, even on the day, on Saturday, before this, uh, this tragedy happened, we had those guns, but it's something that we are used to. So we didn't take it that serious because it's something that we always hear. Shootings are common in South Africa, a country with one of the world's highest murder rates, fueled by gang violence and alcohol. But the similar modus operandi in the weekend killings has left the investigators puzzled. What we know is that the assailants, they just entered into that space while people are enjoying themselves and they shot randomly to them. Um, as to what is the motive, currently we don't know, but our detectives are hard at work. Police Minister Becky Saleh receives a full report on the mass shootings. Following the high-level meeting, which will also be attended by the National Commissioner of South African Police Service, a site visit to the crime scene will be conducted. 11 people were taken to the hospital and three later succumbed to their wounds. The dead were aged between 19 and 35. No arrests have been made yet and there were no details regarding the assailants. Our intelligence community are also deployed to can go and collect information and statements from the witnesses and so forth to assist us to crack this case. We hope that with the assistance of the community around here, sharing the information, then we'll be able to can crack this case. If they have information of these many quantums, time and again, uchigangapa kalong a quantum, uchigangapa kalong a quantum. If some of those quantums really, uh, uh, our community should actually assist in identifying some of them. While some speculate that these could be a coordinated attack on individuals and the extended killing to mislead the police, others say it could be a fight against the government. Only investigations by the police and forensic experts can ascertain the truth. Ni Omani, reporting for News Central. Really sad news uh, there in South Africa. But joining us from Johannesburg is uh, New Central correspondent Diane Hawker to shed more light on this. Good morning, Diane. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, Diane. Now, two very strange incidents taking place this weekend, which police say are not related. What do we know about these two shootings? Indeed, uh, some few a few uh, uh, sort of details have emerged since yesterday when the police minister um, visited Soweto. The police minister Begitzele indicated that um, in terms of the Soweto shooting, it looks like a group of five men arrived in a a, a taxi um, referred to there as a quantum by by some of the uh, people speaking there, um, and that they opened fire seemingly using AK-47 rifles, which is quite unusual. Um, they're not rifles or, or weapons that are easily available in South Africa. You can't just walk into, um, you know, a weapons shop and buy an AK-47. So there definitely would be questions about where these people managed to access those kinds of weapons. He also gave information saying that um, 137 cartridges were located at the scene, um, also indicating that there were a lot of shots fired, even though, you know, 15 people uh, were ultimately died, uh, that many more could have died considering how many bullets were actually fired in the Soweto incident. And the police also revealed that two people have been arrested in connection with the Peter Maritzburg incident. Um, we, we don't know much about their, their details and their motives as yet, but it seems like that information could emerge later today if there is a court appearance. Oh, well, um, the, the Soweto incident, of course, in particular, you just mentioned uh, the presence of AK-47 rifles. But I want to go further, you know, and ask, you know, if there's any indication of the motive here, you know, is there something 
going on in South Africa that, you know, we're still yet to unravel? Is it courtism? Mm. Is it drugs? Is it, you know, you know, just an increase in violence that is very mm. unexpected? Because, of course, this is about the fourth tavern um, incident that we're, we're reporting in the last month. Yes, indeed. The question of the motive is the one that is the most confusing at this point, particularly since um, it seems like the Soweto incident, you know, there was a deliberate attack. It wasn't, you know, a robbery um, as, as no, uh, you know, goods were said to have been stolen, but it seems like, you know, there was an intention to attack. There is speculation that it might be a uh, you know, a, 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 a sort of a retaliation against the, the owner of that tavern. But the, the information is simply too vague at this point to give any clear idea as to what's um, the motive. All right. Uh, we, we know that the minister had to face some very tough questions from residents, you know, and uh, there were several concerns that were raised. Let's talk about the Ayobeni Tavern. Was there any update on the Enyobeni Tavern incident that took place on the 26th of June? Um, yes, indeed. The, the minister faced some tough, tough questions from the Soweto residents. Mainly they were saying that, you know, he, he, he has made promises to communities in Soweto previously about improving policing and that that has not happened. Uh, journalists who attended yesterday asked about the Enyobeni um, incident and when the toxicology uh, would be finalized because of course there's still that question about what actually led to those deaths and the police minister said it could still take months for the toxicology reports to be finalized he said anything between 18 and 24 months because there is an existing backlog um, in the the forensic laboratories in south africa so that will obviously be very disappointing to the families um, if they do have to wait that long police say they are trying to fast track it but it's still not clear how fast it will be uh, you, you would know better about south africa's police system and you know and its strengths do you expect that any arrests will be made um, after this um, incident? Uh, it's very difficult to tell. I think it depends on, you know, how many witnesses and whether anyone is able to identify. Um, South Africa has uh, sometimes had some great success with policing and prosecution. And in other instances, like with the Senzo Meiwiwa trial, for example, we have gone, um, you know, years without having any clarity and only now uh, people are, are facing um, you know a, a case but I think with the with the public attention on these cases um, the pressure will be on the police to do something and to make arrests and I think the public attention is what is likely to ensure that there is some kind of finalization. Uh, thank you very much for joining us Diane we do we have come to realize that uh, security concerns are important conversations to have I and mean, we'll be talking about tavern conversations maybe it's time to increase security at these taverns and not just at the taverns in south africa in general our thoughts and our condolences go to the families of the diseased and we stand with south africa even in this trying time <laughs>